Uh, just so everyone knows, I'm Tom Swazi. I'm the former County Executive of Nassau County, and I'm running for County Executive again this year. And this is Howard Weitzman, who is the former Comptroller. We served together for eight years. And Howard is running again for a County Comptroller. And uh, the reason that we've asked you to come here today is we want to, uh, we're very concerned about the fact that the County has not released its results for 2012. It's now uh, June of 2013, and the county has not released its results for 2012. And uh, we believe that the uh, county executive and the controller are misleading the public regarding the results of the 2012 budget. And we're concerned not only because of the fact that they're misleading the public, but this could uh, put the county into a very serious situation. We called this press conference because of the fact that uh, we're concerned not only about the fact that the county is misleading the public regarding the 2012 results, but because the SEC is paying uh, particular attention to municipalities and how they release their official statements as to how the county is doing financially. And this could su subject the county to charges by the Securities and Exchange Commission if they misrepresent what the financial results of the county are. Uh, the general public and the investing public relies upon the county's statements as to the financial condition of the county uh, when they decide whether or not they want to buy the bonds or not. And we believe the county is misrepresenting what the financial status of the county is. In fact, in, in 2012, during the course of 2012, there was a projected deficit by the administration and by the controller uh, for the 2012 budget. In January of 2013, uh, the controller set out, it's almost, he came out and said it's almost miraculous that the county had a surplus in 2012. And we're saying it's more than miraculous, it's just not true. Uh, the county did have a deficit in 2012, and for them to try and represent that they had a surplus uh, is disingenuous and misleading to the public and could subject, subject the county to charges by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, when the county does its budget, it's important that they take into, effect, into account all the different revenues that come in and the expenses that go out or should go out from the county. And we believe that there are several examples, and I'm going to ask Howard to uh, discuss uh, in a little more detail. We believe there are several examples where the county is not taking into account in their financial statements what's really happening. They're not, in accounting terms, accruing the expenses that came due and owing in 2012 and then not showing them in their 2012 results. The biggest one is something that we've all heard about many times, it's a very confusing topic, but the biggest one is the subject of tax certiorari's. The county has over $300 million that it owes in tax certiorari refunds, and it is not accounting for any expense in 2012 for those ter tax certiorari refunds. That's a big expense. They owe over $300 million. They're not paying back the money, and they're not accruing, they're not showing the expenses that they have. A second example is something we've been hearing a lot about, which is Hurricane Sandy. Now, Hurricane Sandy is a very devastating impact on all the people of Long Island, and it was very expensive to respond to it. And the federal government has provided a lot of money and will continue to provide a lot of money to pay for the response to Hurricane Sandy. But local governments, including the county of Nassau, have to match some of those expenses that FEMA puts in. In some cases, it's 80% by the federal government and it's 20% by the local municipality. In some cases, it's 90% by the federal government and it's 10% by the local municipality. And some very rare instances, it's 100% by the federal government, but that's very rare and it certainly doesn't happen with everything. It only happens with certain things. The county must, in its 2012 results, show an expense for the county match that it has for Hurricane Sandy. That's a real expense that must be showed for showed there. And I'm going to ask Howard to talk about some of those things, including the police overtime and different things that we've discussed, Howard. So uh, we're very concerned about what's going on here. I want to just, for, uh, for Laura that has not uh, been around in Long Island for that long, I just want to point out some historical facts. The county of Nassau is one of the wealthiest counties in America. Uh, it has its poverty, it has solid middle class, and it has wealthy people, but it's one of the overall wealthy county, wealthiest counties in America. In 1999, 
when the economy was booming and the federal government had surpluses and Bill Clinton was the president and the unemployment was at record lows and home ownership was at record highs and the internet revolution was booming, everything was great all over the country. The world was in good financial shape. In 1999, Nassau County was on the brink of bankruptcy and its bond rating was lowered to one step above junk bond status. And the state of New York took the extraordinary measure of putting a control board in place. They call it NIFA, the Nassau Interim Finance Authority, in 1999. That happened when the economy was great. Howard and I came into office in January of 2002, shortly after September 11th of 2001. Three months after September 11th of 2001. And we had to fix the problems that the county faced, and we did fix the problems that the county faced. We raised the taxes the first year in office. We didn't raise them again for six years in a row. We reduced the size of the workforce. We did smart government initiatives. We reduced the borrowing. We did all kinds of things to try and reform the county government. And as a result, we had eight confirmed budget surpluses every single year, eight in a row surpluses. We had 13 bond upgrades by Moody's, Fitch, and Standard & Poor's, which are the outside rating agencies that look at the county finances, that it's important that you give them truthful statements, which is another reason we're concerned about these misleading statements. And every independent uh, analy analysis of the county budget said that Nassau County was turned around under our stewardship. Come 2010, when Mangano and Moragos came into office, what have we seen? We've seen a confirmed deficit in 2011. They confirmed it, they admit it that there's a deficit in 2011. We believe, we know, that there was an actual deficit in 2012, and we believe that they're not telling the truth about it, and they're not going to tell the truth about it. Uh, they've had two bond downgrades from the different bond rating agencies, uh, and they have put the county in serious financial condition to such a point that the control board that was put in place in 1999, that never during Howard and my terms in office did they ever threaten to take over the county, actually took over the county of Nassau. And the county's in fact suing the Nassau Interim Finance Authority right now. So Howard and I are both CPAs. We both have pretty serious financial backgrounds and financial understanding of these financial issues. And it may sound boring, uh, but the reality is is that this is the nuts and bolts of what's needed to do to run a government. And these guys are failing at the way that they're running the government. And we're concerned not only that they're misleading the public, that they're misleading, misleading the rating agencies, which will result in further downgrades for the county, which will cause our interest expenses to go up. But most uh, 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 important right now, and most timely right now, is that Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, has been charged by the SEC with misleading the public in their financial statements, and we're concerned that that will happen in Nassau County and have a very bad I effect on the county's image. And we don't want them to mislead the county, uh, to mislead the public regarding the county's financial statements. So with that, I want to ask Howard to give uh, more details on each of these different topics. The reason that it's important to issue timely financial statements is, timely and accurate financial statements, is that the rating agencies depend on these. They periodically review the county's financial health, as they do every other municipality, and use it to upgrade and keep current the ratings on the county. The fact that the county, for the second year in a row, has filed for an extension to file their financial statements is an indication that they're having problems themselves putting it together. By comparison, in the eight years I was in office, we never filed for an extension. We filed our reports on time all of the time. This is the second year in a row now that they filed for an extension. And the fact is that bondholders and the taxpayers of Nassau County are entitled to timely and accurate financial statements. Now, as Tom pointed out earlier, the concern that we have is that they are misleading the public with their financial pronouncements and their statements because they are not including all of the expenses that they should be including. And that's a serious issue. The test, the test in accounting for whether or not you include an expense is, is it reasonable that you're going to pay it out? I mean, accounting is not necessarily all hard and fast numbers. There are some times that estimates have to be made. And the test will always be, is it reasonable that a number is going to be paid out? If you apply that test, Nassau County administration under Mangano and Maragos has failed and gets an F because they are not using a reasonableness test. For example, on the real estate tax refunds. Real estate tax refund backlog now is $400 million. It was $160 million approximately when we left office. 
they are not including those real estate tax refunds as budgetary expenses, as if they're never going to pay it. It's totally unreasonable because we know in 2012 they're going to pay out anywhere from 70 million to 100 million in real estate tax refunds. But they've not included those and do not have any intention of including those in their financial statements. Hurricane Sandy was a terrible uh, event that affected the uh, lives of many, many Long Islanders. And it's costing a lot of money to repair that damage. And we're lucky that we have a federal government that's able to contribute towards that help. The estimates we have is that FEMA will reimburse anywhere from 80 to 90 percent of real expenses, of real expenses, that the state may even contribute 10 percent. So the county will get back a lot of what they expended. But they're assuming they're going to get back 100 cents on the dollar, which is totally unrealistic. Because, as we all know, the federal government gives, they take back. And they're going to come out, maybe not this year, probably two or three years, and they're going to audit those expenses that the county submitted. And what they're going to find is going to cause them to take money back. For example, the Nassau County Police Department incurs overtime every year. That's just a basic part of policing service, and because of the way uh, schedules are uh, put together, police will always incur overtime. Let me just point out that they've mismanaged the police department so badly that overtime is record through the roofs right now, unrelated to Sandy, but go ahead. But the fact that they're incurring overtime in itself is not an indication of anything. Starting with Hurricane Sandy, all of the overtime is being charged against FEMA. As if nothing happened in the police department after that except taking care of, of um, hurricane damage. Is that reasonable? Is that going to pass anybody's reasonable test? I doubt it. All right. There are other examples of that as well. Public works expenditures, everything for public works being charged against FEMA. And they're going to find this out. They're going to see it. Our government does a good job in ordering those things. The county's not going to get 100 cents on the dollar back in reimbursement. They're going to get something less. And they've got to set that up as an expense, whatever they estimate. There are other areas as well. A wage freeze being discussed in court today that they have not taken into account at all on their financial statements. And this is what we know about. We don't know about what's going on behind closed doors and the decisions that are being made outside of the public eye. We'll see that when they finally issue their financial statement. But these are the issues that we know about. Now taken individually, every one of these issues is material and would cause a misstatement of the county's finances. But when you add them all together, it removes any credibility that the county's financial statements could possibly have. Now, we are all aware that the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, is taking a much harder line with municipalities in respect to not only their financial statements, but the pronouncements that are made by public officials as to the relative health of their municipality. In the Harrisburg case, they were charged with securities fraud, not only because they issued their statements improperly, but because of what they said about the financial condition of Harrisburg. When they were saying Harrisburg was in great financial shape, when in fact they were talking about filing for bankruptcy. We're afraid that the same thing could be happening in Nassau County, that the elected officials are talking about the great health of Nassau County, and they're just totally disregarding the reality of what's happening out there. We will pay these real estate tax refunds back at we some point. To. It's the law. We have to. We've done it for years. They've made the real estate situation worse with their handling of the assessment system. So we clearly will pay these back. We will not get 100 cents on the dollar in FEMA reimbursement. All right. As we're all sitting here right now, that's just the fact of life. Uh, we'll do well. Maybe we'll be lucky if we get 90 to 95 cents, but you can't assume we're going to get back 100 cents on the dollar. And when we actually see the financial report, when they get around to filing it, we'll have many other issues to bring up as well. We are very concerned about the public being misled and getting the wrong impression as to the financial health of Nassau County. So, and everybody should understand that as a, as a uh, accounting matter, uh, which matters as far as managing things, as to understand what's happening in a particular situation at a particular point in time, is you have to show the expenses at the time that they were incurred. As, as Howard said, the, the test of reasonableness. Is this bill going to be paid? 
yes, we're going to have to pay this sooner or later. But when did you incur that bill that you have to pay it? And these bills have been incurred. We will have to pay these things. And in addition to the things that we, uh, as we said, as Howard said, you know, we know that we have these Sandy expenses that are not going to be reimbursed. We know uh, that we have these tax certiorari refunds, these tax refunds that are, uh, are going to have to be paid. There are other things that we know of anecdotally of just bills that are not being paid for the, by the county. I, I hear from contractors all the time, whether they're road pavers or people working at the sewage treatment plant or different firms that are working for the county or even not-for-profit agencies that are simply not being paid. Now, we don't know if these uh, expenses that have been incurred that pass the reasonableness test, they're going to have to be paid. We would you reasonably expect they're going to have to be paid. We don't know if they're actually showing these expenses in their operating expenses for 2012. So this problem could be even bigger than what we're, we're pointing out today. There's one, one last point that I want to make. At the end of the year, when they finally do get around to issuing their financial statements, the accounting firm, their outside independent accounting firm, will have to give an opinion on those statements. And they'll have to report whether or not the statements fairly represent the condition of Nassau County. When Tom and I took office in 2002, the accounting firm for the previous three years had disclaimed an opinion on the county's financial statements because they were in such bad shape they couldn't give, they couldn't give an opinion as to the fairness of the presentation. For the eight years that we were in office, we were able to get what's called a clean opinion from our accounting firm, which was the same accounting firm that had been there previously. For eight years, we always got a clean opinion on the financial statements, that they were fairly presented and the county was in good financial condition. I will be amazed if at the end of this year the accounting firm is able to give them an opinion. I would not be surprised at all if we see for the first time in almost a decade that the accounting firm will have to disclaim an opinion on the financial statements, which will then cause further bond downgrades, which will also cause further increases in the county's borrowing costs. And the reason that Howard feels that way is because of the fact that the accounting firm will be putting itself in peril if they sign off on what we believe would be a misrepresentation of the financial condition of Nassau County. So the accounting firm could get themselves in trouble if they give a clean opinion uh, to this, this bogus uh, uh, 2012 results. So they have to be very seriously concerned. And it may be something that's contributing to the fact that it's taking so long for these numbers to come out because of the battles that are probably going on between Moragos and Mangano and the accounting firm right now as to what's going to be the honest picture of what's going on in the county finances. So uh, with that, we'll make ourselves available for any questions you may have. And you thought accounting was boring. <laughs> Isn't this fun? <laughs> yeah, for the tax certiorari. The real estate tax uh, Yeah, the $300 million. Um, from my understanding, though, at least Mangano is arguing that that's money that should be bonded and that, you know... Even if it's bonded, they have to... You stay. still have to report it as an expenditure. Okay. But the, the problem that they have is that they don't have bonding authority. That has nothing to do with whether or not they incurred the expense, right? They, it's clear that they've incurred the expense in 2012. Nobody could argue that they're not going to pay back these monies for 2012. Whether or not they ever get bonding authority, that's a future issue that's subject to the legislature. And if you take a look back at the eight years that Tom was county executive, they didn't get bonding authority in all those years, and the amounts that weren't bonded were always included in the budget. They were always included in the budget. So one way or another, it has to show as an expenditure. But you can't put your head in the sand and say, well, we're hoping to get bonding authority in the future, and therefore we'll ignore the fact that we have this expense at the present time. So are you saying that 90% of the Sandy's um, refund went to the reimbursement. reimbursements went to the county's police department? And no, 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 no. no. Okay. I just, what I said was mm -hmm. that they're assuming that they're going to get 100 cents on the dollar between FEMA and New York State. What they're not taking into account well, maybe they are, but they just don't, they're ignoring it, is the fact that these expenditures are all subject to audit 
Nobody gives out money without them going in and actually checking. So there's all there's all kinds of money that the county spent to respond to Sandy. Okay, right. they had to spend money to cut, money. They had to cut down trees. Right. They had to that uh, limbs that had fallen. Some things that they did bogusly. You know, you saw that thing with looks great services. Mm -hmm. I say looks great smells bad. I mean, there's something bad going on with that whole situation. But so they 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 uh, had to move, remove debris. They had to chip wood. They had to repair drains. They had to repair roads. They had to clean up flooded areas. They had to uh, demolish certain things. They had to pay the police overtime to, because the traffic lights were out during the uh, when all the uh, electricity was off. They had to have the public works department work overtime to clear storm drains and to uh, move sand and debris and clean out the debris all over Long Beach and in Oceanside. So that all these different expenses were occurred, incurred. This was hundreds of millions of dollars of expenses. Now the federal government through FEMA comes in and says, we're going to pick up a big piece of that for you. You can't afford to pay that locally. The whole country is going to help you. The right. same way that we help people when they're in other parts of the country when they face disasters. But they don't pick up everything. And they don't pick up things that they think were done inappropriately. If they feel that you paid well above the market price for a particular contractor to do some work, they're not going to give you reimbursement for that. They're only going to pay you back what the market would bear. So if they think you did it wrong in a, in a, in a, and you didn't go through the proper procedure, they're not going to give you a refund for that. Another example of that, which is a perfect one, is they paid a contractor to cut down, I think, 160 trees inside the Wellwood Preserve. And these trees were inside a preserve. What did right. this have to do with right. Sandy or remuneration afterwards? It had nothing to do with it. In fact, it was a contractor ripping off Nassau County. But they paid it. And now they're going to put that in for reimbursement. And somebody's going to audit it and come back and look and say, wait a minute, why would we ever be paying for this? The bigger issue are the overtime issues, the regular expenses. It, it was pointed out. When you have to clean storm drains and it's related to the storm, FEMA should reimburse that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But at some point, it stops, and the county has to go back to paying its own expenses. And I think FEMA's going to have a hard time when they take a look at police overtime, when they take a look at public works expenditures, rationalizing how the entire country should be paying for Nassau County's overtime budget. So, uh, and Laura, I just wanted to point out, you know, that when you have the district attorney, you have the Attorney General of New York State, you have federal agencies all investigating what looks great services and the county did with its different contracts. Everybody's analyzing all these different contracts. The Attorney General, the District Attorney, the Federal Wage and Labor Bureau uh, Department, all these different things. They're going to find things that were done inappropriately and the, the, the FEMA will not reimburse for the things that were done improperly. So uh, the county has to have some reserves set aside for what the county match will be for these different expenses that are not going to be picked up by FEMA or by the state. But well, isn't that always a set aside for emergencies for the county to incur? Isn't it money's always set aside? Very small well, amount. There's, there's supposed small. to be money put aside, and this county's supposed to have reserves, but they've been eating up their reserves over the years as they've continue to plunge the county into more and more trouble with debts and deficit. So, from my understanding, um, what happened in Harrisburg, because I remember reading about this earlier, they kind of, they were issuing bonds but for like this mega recycling facility, like some $300 million facility. Incinerator. Yeah, incinerator. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it just seems like it, obviously the SEC launched an investigation and there may be similarities to what they might do here in NASA, but I just, I'm I'm struggling to find the parallel. The problem was not that they issued bonds, which all municipalities do. The problem was after they issued those bonds, they went out and made misleading statements about the financial condition of Harrisburg. Now, remember, when you, if I sell bonds, those bonds then trade. People buy and sell them. It's like stocks. It's, it's no different. So the, every day there are people buying and selling those bonds. And they're looking to the county or the, the issuer, in that case Harrisburg, to tell them what the financial condition is so they can decide whether they want to buy or not or what price they're willing to pay. If they're being misled as to the financial condition of the municipality, they're not making an informed decision. And that's called fraud. All right? And that's why we think when you look at some of the decisions that are being made in Nassau County, they're misleading people about the financial condition of the county. You know, Laura, mm -hmm. you know, politicians we all say stuff 
And a lot of people don't believe what we say, either side. You know, I say I did a great job. They say, you did a terrible job. I said, I did a great job. They say, you did a terrible job. So we say, well, let's look at what the outside independent analysts say. Mm -hmm. Moody's, Fitch, and Standard & Poor's. They give us 13 bond upgrades based upon analysis of our financial condition where they rely upon the official statements of the county. In the case of the Mangano administration, they've had two bond downgrades because of their financial condition from these official statements. We're concerned that these official statements that they're doing, which are serious, important documents that have a, a lot of regulatory requirements, are being misrepresent, misrepresentations of the county's actual financial condition. Now, do I think the SEC is going to come in tomorrow and, 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 and go after Nassau County's uh, 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 financial condition? I don't think it'll happen tomorrow. But if they continue to mis misrepresent the financial condition of the county, they could put this county in serious trouble. How much of that has to do with, I mean, you mentioned your track record, and then all of a sudden in 2011, the first time, right, that uh, there's a budget deficit, right? Right. 2011. Okay. And remember the 2010 budget was a budget that I did in 2009 yeah. for 2010. So, but how much of that has to do with the economy, the, you know, recession? A lot of it has to do with the economy. This is a very important point. This is a really important point. There is no question that the economy is very difficult. There is no question that responding to Sandy is very difficult. There is no question that things that are going on in the state with pensions and health insurance are very difficult. But you have to actually respond to those problems and solve them. They're making the problems worse by misleading the public, by t rewarding their friends with outside contracts, and by mismanaging the county. You know, right. Howard and I, when I came into office, I had a tough situation also. It was very tough. We, had, we were rated the worst run county in America. America. We had massive deficits in front of us. We were responding to September 11th of 2001. Our police expenses were going through the roof because we had to increase security. We had a tough situation, but we fixed it. And, and, and they're going to say, well, he raised taxes. Yeah, I raised taxes my first year in office. I didn't raise them for six years in a row after that. And we, and we solved the problem by getting 13 bond upgrades. And we responded, you know, it was a tough situation when the, when the national recession started on se in September of 2008. Remember when Lehman Brothers went bust and the whole world fell apart and our sales tax went into the tank? But we fixed it. We kept the county stable. That's why the bond rating agencies in 2009, December of 2009, said the county finances, no negative outlook, no downgrade. They said county, county finances are stable. It wasn't until Mangano came in and Moragos came in that they did these irresponsible things with the county budget that the, that the county got a bound downgrade and got actual deficits. Yeah, I, I want to make a point when you talk about the economy because that's very important. Mm -hmm. The economy directly affects Nassau, Nassau County sales tax, which is the biggest source of revenue that Nassau County gets. In 2008, when we really got hit with the recession, it caused a $100 million loss in sales tax in 2009. A hundred million dollars came out of the county's budget in 2009, which is unprecedented. Ended the year with a balanced budget with a surplus in 2009. Since then, since Mangano and Maragos have been in office, the sales tax has increased every year. We all know that the bottom of the recession was 2009. Mm -hmm. 2010 it got better, 2011 got better, 2012 got better. So they've been in an increasing economy mismanaging it at the same time. The deficit in 2011 in no way was related to the economy. Since they were in a stronger economy, and if you look at it, sales tax came in actually higher than they projected. So your forecast is that we actually in serious trouble in terms of the rating to get new bonding? Oh, Our forecast serious. is that we've, gonna, we've lost money in 2011, we're going to lose money in 2012, uh, no matter how they try to put a happy face on it, it, the fact of the matter is that we're going to lose money. If you talk to NIFA, they're going to tell you the same thing, that there's a big loss in 2012. And uh, we are going to get another bond downgrade because the last time uh, we were rated, we had a negative outlook, which means they're looking to downgrade the bonds again in the future. And every time the county goes out to borrow, they have to get another rating. And we're going to be getting further bond downgrades as we go along because things are not getting better. You can't point to any area in the county budget and say things are getting better. Reimbursement for Hurricane Sandy is not a sign of improvement. Not recording sales tax refunds is not a sign of a strengthening budget. 
None of these things have anything to do with the county getting better. It just means that they're using more smoke and mirrors with respect to their accounting. Just a clerical thing. When should have this report been released? And obviously, you guys are calling on them to release it. So All right, there's two, there's two issues here. The report itself, which is like 600 pages, and maybe three people in the whole country read the entire report, mm -hmm. is due June 30th. It's called a CAFRA, Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. And it's due under the regulations set out by the Government Accounting uh, Office Association, GFOA, Government Finance Office Association, GFOA. So they require it to be issued by June 30th. Traditionally, what's happened in Nassau County is the controller will come out as soon as they know what the final numbers are and say, this is the county's results for last year. I always did that in February. Maybe one year I did it in the first week and second week in March. My predecessor did the same thing. Always came out in February. We are now in June, and we haven't heard anything. And Maragos has said it's because of federal regulation. There is no federal regulation. And in fact, if he's blaming it on FEMA, Suffolk issued their numbers, and Suffolk had the same issues with FEMA than we do. Suffolk just issued the $150 million deficit. Remember that was in the paper a couple weeks ago? So they came out and they said, this is what it is. Right. All right. What's happening now, we suspect, is there's a battle going on between the accounting firm and Maragos as to what the results are finally going to be. Now, as far as the June 30th report, that's an absolute deadline. You must file by June 30th. During my eight years in office, we filed every year on time. This is the second year, 2012, that Maragos is asking for an extension to file. Please file for an extension already. Yes. File for a 30-day extension. Oh. Which, again, in itself gives people uh, a moment of pause about what's wrong with the county that they can't get this document done in time for June 30th. And that would be for the 2012? Yes. Correct. Okay. And then 2011... He filed for an extension then, too. And we still haven't heard the numbers. Oh, no, 2011. The, the oh, okay. It's all so over. We got a. We ended the year, I think, with a $50 million okay. deficit. So you're saying we still haven't heard uh, about the 2012, 2012 results. You would always give it earlier. In February. So 2000, okay. 2012, we haven't heard the, the unofficial number. Okay. And 2012, the official number, they've asked for an extension beyond the June 30th date. Okay. In fact, and, we, and we, we think the rumor hotline is is that they're going to be coming out with this number in the next next week or so, you know, the unofficial number. Okay. And we're concerned that they're not going to tell the truth. There's another, there's another point I want to make, and that is one of the most important responsibilities in the controller's office is the issuance of this annual report, which is a charter responsibility. The controller alone is responsible for issuing that report. This is the CAFRA the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, Laura. Mm -hmm. Maragos, a couple of months ago, said he didn't have the in-house staff to complete this report anymore and has outsourced the report. He's actually had to bring in another accounting firm oh my gosh. to come in to do it. Now, he said that the reason he was doing that was because he was too busy reviewing the bills for Hurricane Sandy. Now, we know about the great job he's done reviewing the bills for Hurricane Sandy because that work is all being investigated by the Attorney General and the District Attorney. But even if he was busy reviewing bills, he gave them a three-year contract. Is he still going to be reviewing Sandy bills for the next three years? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> pattern and practice of them laying off the county workers while they hire outside firms that are somehow politically connected. Okay? Thank you, everybody. I know this is so stimulating. <laughs> <laughs>